Hello everyone and welcome to today's oil painting time lapse and studio sessions episode 38. Before I begin, I just wanted to quickly announce that I'm having a 15% off sale for prints at my store, so you can redeem it with the code INC at happyd-artist.com and the sale ends April 30th. Today's video is brought to you by Squarespace, which is what I've been using for the past four years to build and host my website and online shop. I absolutely love them and I'm so honored to bring you guys this special offer. So whether you need a domain, website, or online store, make your next move with Squarespace. Start your free trial today at squarespace.com and visit squarespace.com slash happydartist to get 10% off your first purchase. Also, I will be listing all of the art supplies used in today's video along with links to purchase them in the description below. Today's time lapse is of a piece that I'm going to be exhibiting in May at Spoke Art Gallery in San Francisco, which is one of my favorite galleries in the city and it was one of the first galleries I actually had been to when I first moved to San Francisco and just seeing all the talented artists and beautiful pieces there was one of my first motivators to try to pursue art or at least become curious about the art industry. So it's always an honor to be able to kind of come full circle and see my work hanging up in a space that I used to only be a visitor at and yeah it's just one of these experiences that makes me feel so grateful for the journey that has led me here so thank you Spoke Art for letting me exhibit in your show. The theme for the show was quite open, there weren't any restrictions on what we had to paint and the only requirement that the show had was that the piece has to measure 12 by 12 inches. So as you guys know I've made a few paintings that are in the perfectly square dimension before but it's not a size that I'm normally used to working with so this piece was a really fun challenge and kind of um, an interesting play on at least for me an interesting experiment on what I can do with composition given a perfectly square surface because usually I work with rectangles and having something perfectly square actually for me changes a lot of the planning and the process that goes into planning out a composition. Also, I used this gorgeous 12 by 12 inch cradled birch panel from Trekle Art Supplies. I just completely fell in love with the beautiful wood surface. It was so luxurious and easy to paint on. And the one and three quarter inch depth of the cradled panel really made for a very striking three dimensional looking, almost sculptural final product. And the folks at Trakel Art Supplies were kind enough to offer a special discount code for my viewers if you guys want to purchase some of their wonderful art supplies for yourselves. The code is HAPPYD and can be redeemed at trakel.com for 15% off. And I'll leave the information on the screen as well as in the description below. So today I wanted to chat with you guys about procrastination and creativity. Um, lately, while I've been painting, I've been listening to some interesting podcasts that I found and also various TED Talks um, from YouTube, but some of the ones I listened to were talking about habits for the creative mind and the general consensus that I learned from many of these talks is that a lot of times people are at their creative peak when they're under a little bit of pressure. So. I'll link this video below, of course, in my description if you guys want to check it out as well. But there was this one really interesting TED talk and no, I wasn't sponsored or paid to recommend this, but I just thought it was so interesting where they talked about Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech and how basically up until the very last minute, right before he got on stage, he was still changing up his speech and writing down notes and frantically kind of working on it up until the last minute. and. When he got up to the podium, um, you know, the four iconic words, I have a dream came out and that was actually not part of the written plan. So it was almost kind of improvised on the spot. And it just got me thinking about how artists kind of operate in a similar manner. I think, at least for me personally, when I do have a little bit of extra pressure, um, it does help me kind of push myself to think outside the box. And I think part of that is because when I'm short on time, 
and desperate for ideas or desperate for a breakthrough, I'm more open and receptive to anything because I don't really have time to you know, filter things out or vet things out before I kind of take the plunge. So usually when I have a little bit of external pressure, whether it's a looming deadline or, you know, an upcoming solo show, which, you know, I actually do have going on, um, that little bit of pressure combined with, you know, a little bit of shortage on time and, you know, I guess with a, with a dollop of panic, <laughs> if you will, um, it sometimes just forces my brain to make these interesting connections that really open the door for um, a lot more edgy and creative and risky ideas. Now, I'm not saying that it's good to wait until the last minute or procrastinate just for the sake of kind of the thrill of, you know, forcing yourself to be open to all the possibilities. But at least for me personally, I think it's good to strike a balance by introducing just the right amount of procrastination. And a great example I'll use for this is a solo show. So um, over the course of my career, I've been super grateful and fortunate enough to have a few solo shows under my belt. And I noticed a pattern when it comes to planning for these shows. And this might be unique to just me or, you know, I guess people who share the same mindset as me. But usually with solo shows, galleries will let you know months and sometimes a year or more in advance that you, you have a solo show coming up and, you know, the number of pieces you're expected to have. Um, you know, they don't just spring this on you because a solo show does require such a large body of work and so much time and planning that you usually have ample time beforehand to plan out your pieces and plan out your schedule for creating the show. So for me, let's say that I usually have 12 months before the start of my show to plan out what I want to do, how many pieces, um, the timeline, the scheduling for how I'm going to complete them. Um, instead of doing kind of, I guess, the most logical or the most stress-free method of let's say doing one painting a month every single month until you have to you know debut the solo show, um, I also don't go on the opposite end of the spectrum where I wait until the very last minute, let's say I only have a few weeks left and I'm just not sleeping and painting 24 seven because you know, if I don't, I will just literally not be able to make the show. Um, I like to find a balance somewhere in between those two polar opposite ends of the spectrum. I like to maybe give myself not all year to work on the show, but let's say a few months. So maybe three-ish months. And that way, um, you know, I still have to keep up a really fast pace of making sure I'm creating many, many pieces and pretty much occupying a lot of my time with painting and having very little leisure time or downtime. But also being forced to adhere to that more strict of a deadline forces me sometimes to produce some of my best work. I think a lot of my greatest ideas and biggest leaps in the progress I make or the improvements I make in painting happen when I have a little bit of pressure from these solo shows. So yeah, this has just been a pretty interesting revelation that I recently learned about myself through listening to these TED Talks and I just thought I wanted to share it with you guys. And yeah, I'm wondering if anyone else out there listening has a similar philosophy or maybe listening to this video made you realize that you share a similar kind of outlook or um, habit when it comes to creating. Do you guys find a little bit of advantage in procrastinating the right amount? Uh, let me know. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. So yeah, this kind of sums up my video for today. Thanks for listening to me ramble. Um, the original artwork can be viewed and purchased through Spoke Art Gallery. The show begins May 5th in San Francisco. And if you're interested in a print of this piece, I have them up right now at my website at happyd-artist.com. Lastly, before I end this video, I just wanted to proudly show off these beautiful entries for my $1 coloring challenge last month. I absolutely love what you guys did with this theme. And if you're interested in participating this month, pledge at least $1 at patreon.com slash happydartist. I can't wait to see your entries. Thank you guys so much for watching. Bye.